the nearest the relationship between the calibrated level of the 400s and 500s and up is actually quantum mechanics. And of course, the Heisenberg principle explains why uh, healings uh, work, why prayer works. Uh, it gives some kind of a scientific respectability. Uh, and this is, a, we, we talk about Henry Stapp's uh, website, is a good place to pick it up where the Schrodinger uh, early condition is activated by the Heisenberg pr principle and uh, collapses the wave function, which is the way we can say in quantum mechanics what we say in just spiritual teaching, that potentiality becomes actuality when conditions are appropriate. And one of the conditions that is appropriate in, in the proximate field is intention. So I like Wayne Dyer's book, he picked up on intention <clears throat> to demonstrate its importance. By sheer intention then, we tend to manifest. We tend to manifest things due to intention because the potentiality actualizes as uh, the collapse of the wave function. Okay, next. So that just proves you can be spiritual and also scientific, right? I know more about the Heisenberg, you know, quantum mechanics than a lot of physicists do. <laughs> Why? Because it's, it, it's like a reflection of the spiritual reality, which is already second nature, you know, in which you see emergence, emergence. You don't see causality, you see potential. So the world is, what you're seeing is the emergence of potentiality continuously. It's not cause and effect, there's not a this and a that. The this is emerging into actuality in the three-dimensional expression because on the level of consciousness that exists already is potentiality. Hmm? Yeah, Sheldrake, of course, Sheldrake Drake's principle, and uh, I think it was very important. Not, not too many people quote, more people should quote Sheldrake than they do, I think, in the world of physics because I thought it was a very important phenomenon. Okay, so the Newtonian paradigm, as you see, things are forced, caused, provable, measurable. Uh, this is the world of the ego, it is also the world of science. And then quantum mechanics, we're moving on to a whole different viewpoint of reality. We see non-local coherence, we see potential, we see the time-dependent and independent phenomena, and the whole world of stochastic or so-called chaotic. And in in our work, those are attractor fields. So on the scale of consciousness, each one of those levels represents an attractor field from the viewpoint of nonlinear dynamics. It has an energy to it. Just as I say, there's only one orange cat in the whole universe. That's an attractor field of orange catness, out of which emerges its representations as living orange, orange kitties. But all of them are controlled by the same attractor field. Orange kitties don't bark, you know what I mean? They're just <laughs> in the attractor field of kittiness, they mew. So, they, <laughs> so anyway, that creates a certain amount of order. So in nonlinear dynamics, these are called attractor fields.